Hey YouTube, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be looking at some scripture in the New Testament because there's a discussion that goes on within the Christian community as to whether or not Christians are supposed to keep the law of Moses, uh, keeping certain festivals, and eating certain foods, or rather not eating certain foods based on the Old Testament dietary laws. Now, some do some do these things to honor God and because they want to they they really they want to honor God so they do it just because they love God others say that it's actually required for Christians and that Christians who don't do these things are actually being disobedient to God so we're going to be looking mainly at Acts chapter 15 verses 1 through 29 Romans chapter 14 verses 5 through 12 and Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. And we're going to see what New Testament scripture has to say about this. So we're going to start off with Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to ask you to please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 says, So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival, or a new moon, or Sabbaths. Now we're going to look at Romans chapter 14, verses 5 through 12, where the word of the Lord says, One person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind, he who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to our himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So, that each, so then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another any more, but rather resolve this not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. So now, finally, we are going to be looking at Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 29. And the word of the Lord says, let me just adjust this microphone a little bit more because it's getting stuck in my hair. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, Acts chapter 15. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. They wanted to settle it once and for all. So, being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Verse 7. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Faith. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we shall believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Verse 12. Then all the multitude kept silent 
and listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take them to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins. And I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. Known to God from eternity are all his works, Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. And now we're going to be in verse 22 uh, <clears throat> to read an actual uh, letter that was written uh, to the Christians. It's called the Jerusalem Decree. We're going to start in uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 22. Having trouble with my microphone today. <laughs> Getting stuck in my hair. Okay, verse 22. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church and to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings! Since we have heard that some who went out, of, out from us, they have troubled you with words unsettling your souls, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. Well, I think that that, uh, that section of scripture answers the question as to whether or not Christians are required to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Blessings.